Devo here doing something a little bit different on the channel today. It's been a while, I know. Been busy. But we're gonna talk about this thing right here, the M50 uh, from Canon. I've been using this camera for video mainly, but also taking uh, photos, kind of rediscovered photo photography. It's kind of weird. Um, and I'm frustrated by most of the reviews I see on YouTube, so I figured I'd try my own hat at it. I'm gonna keep this simple. If you've been looking at this camera and you've been going through review after review after review, and it's like they're talking in some alien language about this and that, I wanna give you a simplistic review that talks about, do you need this thing? Does it fulfill that need that you have? Is it easy to use? And what's the upgrade path? So let's start out, do you need this camera? I know a lot of people would say, well, I have a cell phone, it takes great photos, and..." It takes a video at 4K. Yes, it does, but it doesn't. It doesn't take great high quality photos or videos. And it all comes down to sensor size. The sensor in a, in a cell camera is very compact. The, um, the larger the sensor, the more light gets in contact with that sensor, the more dynamic range that is gonna be, and the more realistic the image, whether it's video or it's a still photo, is going to see. The way that cell or mobile devices tend to make photos look well is it goes through software at the back end. It's more of the software doing the work to make it look more realistic. It decides that grandma is orange, so grandma's orange, even though in real life, she is an orange. That's why you have those weird things with, with photos. Also, you've gotta keep in mind that something looks great on a small screen, but when you begin to blow it up or print it out or post those videos to YouTube or look, on a, look at them on a widescreen TV set, they look like crap. So, who needs this? If you are interested in photography and you're a beginner and you've never touched a multi or a uh, interchangeable lens camera, this is a good choice. If you want to document your life, if you want to take pictures of your family, your kids, etc., maybe a few videos here and there, this is a great choice. If um, you want to get into filmmaking or YouTube videos and you've gotten tired of using all the frustration that goes with using cell phones and uh, action cams and etc., this is a good choice for you. This will fill that need. So, how does it do that? This particular camera has a 24 megapixel sensor in it. It's a very large sensor compared to what you're gonna find in a cell phone. I don't know if you can see them in there. Because of that, it gets a pretty broad range of a dynamic range. Meaning that you're gonna have more detailed photos and et cetera than you're gonna have off of a cell phone or an action cam that's this big. Why not, if you're thinking about video, why not get a camcorder? Problem with camcorders is they don't have interchangeable lenses. If you want to change it, you want to change your look, you want to do something more dramatic, you want to have different angles, you want more clarity, you want a sharper lens, you want a fuzzy background, what have you. To get that, you need to have different lenses that you can interchange on that camera and change it. This allows you to do that. This will also shoot in uh, with stills. You can either get just JPEG straight out of the camera with uh, Canon's uh, color science, which is actually pretty realistic, um, or you can it, you can save JPEG or uh, RAW photos. RAW photos are kind of like a they're in color, but they're kind of like a negative. They're a very flat image. You can go into various different image programs and do whatever you want with it, especially Lightroom for video. And for images, autofocusing on this is incredibly good. Um, you have uh, the Canon uh, dual autofocus. On top of that, with stills, you have eye tracking. With uh, um, video, you have on a constant continuous tracking. So basically, you choose the subject that you want to focus on. You get into the right. Auto or the right autofocus, and it will keep that person in focus no matter where you're at without doing a thing. Um, video, it takes 1080p, incredibly high depth, great footage, 4K, does that, but it does it in a crop, and you lose the dual autofocus, which is 
a headache. It tends to fish or look for focus. It's like it's like the video of your your dad made on the camcorder in 1983 where he couldn't quite figure out how to f do the zoom and focus. It just keeps hunting. Um, I really I've shot a few times in 4K, and the problem is is that in the fact that I personally only know maybe two people that have a 4K TV set. Um, I'm editing on screens that are smaller than 32 inch. I watch a majority of my content and most of the things that I do look at are on smaller screens. And even when I put this on my four, uh, 46 inch uh, uh, 1080p TV set, it looks fantastic. I have watched the videos on 4K that have come out of this camera. They look fine. Uh, only a small amount of people would know the difference between the two. And there's a lot of debate about whether or not 4K even matters and if you can see that well. The advantage of 4K and what most people use it for, just to let you know this, is so that they can take a 4K video and then zoom in on sections without losing, um, uh, without it pixelating, you know, or it turns into little dots and gets fuzzy. So, there you know. So, does this fit that need? As a, if you're beginning making films, making short videos, this is gonna be incredibly good. The other thing is, is it has interchangeable lenses, meaning that if you want different looks, you just simply put another lens on. The M, the EFM lenses are kind of limited, especially when it comes to, if you wanna get a really good depth of field, where you get the blurry background, Yes, I would suggest investing in either the Speed Booster or a uh, the adapter that Canon sells that you can use their EF and EFS lenses because you're going to have a lot more variety for the price, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, Sound-wise, not great. Um, I would suggest buying an external mic, something like uh, one of these little tiny GoPro, or not GoPro, Rode shotgun mics. The, uh, they... they Fairly good quality, but definitely much better than this. Other than that, it makes a fairly decent camera, not only to take photos, but also to take video. Now, let's move on to ease of use. You can put this camera in auto, uh, auto mode and take photos all day long that are gonna look incredible. They're gonna stay in focus. You just hit the back of the screen. It has a touch screen. You find what you want in focus. You hit that. It takes the photo. It also has the, uh, the point and shoot type method where you hold it down and shoot. Um, if you've ever used a point and shoot camera or even a cell phone, you're gonna be able to walk right into this. The lenses actually have autofocus in them. They do all that for you. Um, of course, you need to adjust it um, if you're taking, you know, if you're using a zoom lens. But you could sit here and shoot video and take photos and autofocus and have high quality video and high quality photos. Once you get out of that and you want to start moving into manual, it's very easy to switch over, change all the settings just like any other DSLR or mirrorless camera and be as creative as you possibly want to be. The other huge advantage of this camera, especially if you're looking at DSLRs, is what you see on the image uh, screen, the viewfinder, is the electronic image that the camera sensor sees. So what you see in there is definitely what the photo is going to be. The other thing that this has is it has, like I said, focus tracking with eye tracking. So you're, you're going to be able to focus right in on that person's eye. It's going to hit that, which is what people look for when they're taking portraits. When you move into manual, um, manual mode, one thing this camera has, especially in this price bracket, where we're looking at five what is it, like 450 for the body now, and with the kit it's about 450, or 550 to 600. This has uh, focus speaking, meaning when you focus in on something, you can change the colors, but the uh, whatever you're focusing in, the outline will appear highlighted so that you know it's in focus, and you can adjust for that. It is very lightweight. This is something you can throw in a backpack, in your pocket, in a purse, I guess, if you, I've never carried a purse, so I wouldn't know for sure. It's very lightweight. Um, this is the kit lens, the 15 to 45. It's pretty compact. You could even go with like a, the 22, the EFM 22 pancake lens and have this down to probably about there. So if you can imagine, 
that's a very small profile that you can throw in a pocket and take anywhere with you and make high quality videos and take great photos. So this is a very usable camera. The um, menu system on the back, I love Canon's menu system. It's easy to navigate, things make sense. It isn't like Sony, which is the other one that I've used a lot where it's like, okay, what section is the, uh, and you just end up going through it. It's also a touch screen, so you just touch. If you're used to using a mobile phone, it's gonna be easy to adapt to this. Easy, easy peasy to use. Now, let's talk about the upgrade. Of course, it's an interchangeable lens camera, so you are gonna wanna buy additional lenses so they can get different looks, different angles, uh, wider scenes, especially if you're vlogging or doing something like that. Oh, I forgot about this. And it has a flip out screen that rotates. Important if you're filming yourself or, or if you're filming at a low angle or a different angle or a pie, you can see exactly what's going on. Now, back to upgradability. Of course, I'm gonna suggest that you upgrade the microphone. That's gonna be about a $50 thing. The other thing I'm gonna suggest you pick up is this. This is a EM to EF Canon uh, lens adapter. This opens up this camera to every lens Canon has ever sold uh, since, you know, they went to digital. Uh, to be used on this. You can use any of the EF and e, any of the ES or the EFSs. Uh, the reason why that's important is the EM, EFM lenses, I'll be honest with you, they're kind of expensive and they are not really the best quality. Um, when you're looking at lenses, you kind of want something that's fast, meaning that it has a low aperture. The low, most of the uh, EFM lenses just don't have that. Plus, they're expensive by comparison to the EFS lenses. So what I, plus, the other thing is, if you ever plan on moving into a, a more expensive body and get out of the M series, maybe go to a, uh, a Canon 80D like I did or into one of their full frame cameras or even the R series, it's gonna be nice. You're not gonna be able to use this M lens on those you're gonna to have to use the EF lenses or the R's or the EFS's. So for me especially, I'm, it just made more sense to get the adapter and start buying the Canon lenses. The other reason is, is there's a lot of great EFS lenses that are very inexpensive. Like the one I'm shooting on right now, the 10 to 20 or 10 to 18, and um, the, uh, the Nifty 50, the M50 1.8. Those two lenses, uh, the, the 10 to 18, I think was about 260 bucks. Not cheap, but not expensive. Uh, the 50 was around $125. Another favorite lens that I've been using a lot over the, year, over the last three or four months is the uh, EFS 20, 24 millimeter. I think it's 2.8. I know that I'm throwing numbers at you. These are the lenses that are gonna give you that, that um, depth of field that gives you that blurry background kind of allowing you to center and make more artistic photos and videos and have the focus be on the person that you're actually focusing on. Nice thing about it is once you start using EF lenses on this camera, it opens it up to a huge amount of different types of looks you can get from it, design, et cetera, angles, everything. But also it allows you to, to once you've used this to its maximum potential, and you wanna move on to something larger, like a full frame camera, you can take those lenses with you. And you already have that collection built in. So I think that pretty much covers a majority of it. I'm gonna do some additional videos relating to this and some of the accessories that I use with it for filming video on our other channel. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. I hope I helped you make a decision on purchasing this. I did put an affiliate link in the description below if you'd like to use that to buy it. Feel free, please. Um, and I'll also leave one for the shotgun mic. If you feel like I missed something or you have a question about this particular camera, please leave a comment. I'll, I'm happy to answer them when I have time. And um, subscribe. Hit that notification bell because I don't post these as, as, as often as I do other ones or on the other channels, so they're kind of sporadic. But till then, hope you have a good day. 
Take care of yourself and take care of the people around you and enjoy life because we're all counting on you. No pressure.